Well, praise God. You know what day it is? That's another new day in God's neighborhood. <laughs> you know, and, and as we are going through this transition, and there's a lot of things happening, I'm telling you, it's just awesome. And, of course, the media is still lying. Everything is still happening, you know. Uh, they still won't let me post the things I want on Facebook. <laughs> but praise God. Um, in, the, in this time of transition and God is cleaning up. Amen. He's cleaning up. Everything's being cleaned up right now. He's cleaning the temple out. He's cleaning his presence. All, 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 all the garbage is a cleanup. He's bringing judgment all over the world. He's separating the goat from the sheep. The tares from the wheat. The rebellious to the surrendered from the surrendered. Uh, people that are still in survival mode, they're being more exposed. And those being in surrender mode are being blessed. And one of the things that the Spirit said to me, he said, listen, I, I, I want to talk about the heart. I'm thinking, man, we talk about the heart a lot, Lord. He said, these are helps for the heart. Everyone say helps for the heart. Because right now it's so easy to be offended, man. You know? I mean, there's so much stuff going around. There's so much pressure. There's so much demonic activity. And people are easily offended or easily Su surrendering to the voice of the enemy to cause offense. Go to Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, 5. Let's speak it. Thus says the Lord, Curses a man who trusts in himself or man and makes flesh his strength, whose heart departs from the Lord. So he's looking at what he's telling us is the person's heart's departed from him because he's trusted in himself. Amen? Now he's bringing a curse in his life. <clears throat> For he shall be like a shrub in desert and shall not see when good comes. That means he misses opportunities because he's so caught up in himself. But shall inherit parched places in the wilderness in a salt land which is not inhabited. That's a bad place. But blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters which spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear when he comes, but its leaf will be green and will not be anxious in the year of drought, nor will cease from yielding fruit. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the thoughts, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. Now listen. Again, curse is a man's heart that departs from the Lord. Amen. But bless is a man who trusts in the Lord. A person that's heart departs from the Lord is a person that goes back into survival mode. Because he's fighting for his life. A person that trusts the Lord goes into surrender mode. It's totally two different things. He says that when you're in that place of truly trust in the Lord, there's no fear or ang anxiousness when things go wrong. You know, not everything goes right, does it? No. Some days the car don't start. Hello? You shut the door on your toe? <laughs> you know, whatever it may be, <laughs> or on your finger. You know, sometimes things just don't go right the way you expected them to go. You know, it says here that the, the heart is, dis, is a deceptive. It means it's double-minded. It's deceitful. The Lord tests the thoughts of desires because your heart is the core of all desires. So he's going to test the thoughts of the desires in the hearts of men. And he rewards accordingly. He's going to reward whether it's good or bad. Does everybody get it? Amen. Again, we are in a time right now where there's just so much stuff going on. A lot of people are walking in confusion and frustration. A lot of people, you know, there's even an area of Attacks. Go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verse 1. Let's speak it. Do not fret because of evil doers, nor be envious of workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and wither as the green herb. 
Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now this is powerful. He's saying, look, don't fear, don't be envious, which is influential to desires that draw many away from God. He says, trust, dwell, feed, and delight in his desires, and he will release your desires because there's been a, an exchange of desires. Does everybody get it? An exchange of desires that promote his will, which is the core of his heart for us. So, again, remember that our heart is the core of all desires. God has a heart, which is a core of desires. We want to keep in a place where our desires are pure and God-pleasing. Remember, lust is a desire. Amen? Now, it could be a, a good desire, lust for a good desire. Amen? It could be a good desire. In other words, you're lusting for God's presence. Amen? Because it's more important to you than anything. It's a, remember, uh, same thing with addiction. Addiction is a lust, isn't it? Amen. But it's an evil lust. The word tells us that the spirit and the, and, and the flesh lust against one another, don't they? Amen. Praise God. The life force of your heart is to be fed. Your heart wants to be fed by desire. Does everybody get it? Because it is a core desire and it gets fed by desire. Every one of us has a want every single day. You have a desire every single day. You don't escape desires. Amen? And in, in this, the life force of your heart is to be fed by desire. A desires of life or desires of harm. We are all in constant want. The day we no longer want, we die. Because there's no more desire. See, there are wants that are not good and there are wants that are good. We'll go more into this. Again, one of the things God's trying to do is bring us in the area of protecting our heart. Which is supposed to be an exchange for his heart. So there are certain desires that are bad and harmful to us, and there are certain desires that are healthy to us. Amen? Even when you don't want anything, you know what? You still want. Does everybody get it? What do you want? Nothing. So you still want, no matter what. Everybody is in a want every single day. All the time. Our heart is always wanting. There's always a desire to want something. <laughs> Every desire has a will and a purpose. There's threefold desire of past, present, and future. So it's our responsibility to discern these desires that are influential to us. Whether it's from the past, whether it's in the present, or whether it's concerning the future. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. Every desire also has a fruit. Every desire has a what? A fruit. So every desire has a will and a purpose and every desire has a fruit. Psalm 23, first three verses. Let's speak it. The Lord is my shepherd. So he's your overseer. I shall not what? Why? Because he's my overseer. He makes me, here, here it is. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me besides the still waters. He restores my soul or my desires, my heart. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Now this is powerful. He says, I will not desire the ways of the world, amen, or worldly desires that bring sin, transgression, or iniquity. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. He's always in front of me. In this I shall not want because he guides and provides the feeding of my heart's desires from the eternal purpose. So he's always feeding you. 
That's why the word says, feed on me. What are you, what are you feeding? He, you're feeding your heart with the desires of God. Does everybody get this? So one of the things we want to do is not only protect our heart, but know what we're feeding our heart with. Every desire, the, your heart is the core of all desires. A desire is a want, isn't there? Amen? So you must be careful of the fruit of that desire. That means that you've seen it through. What's the end result? And what is the will of that desire? Which is the beginning place. So when a desire comes, what's its will? And as it begins to, when you begin to accept that desire more, you must know what the fruit is. In other words, this is the end result of this desire. Is it harmful? Or is it good? 2 Corinthians 6. Now, there could be a good desire, amen, that could become an idol. Then it becomes a bad desire. Does everybody get it? 2 Corinthians 6, 11. Let's speak it. All Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your what? Own affections. It's an affection, a desire. Yes. And now he goes, now in return for the same, I speak as children to you, you also be open. Then he tells us, here's a guideline, amen? Don't be unevenly yoked with unbelievers. Why? You're going to pick up their desires. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord is Christ with Belial, or what part is a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I'll walk among them, I'll be their God, they shall be my, and they shall be my people. If they do what? If they come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and do not touch what is unclean. Can a desire become unclean? Yes. And then I will receive you. You know, so many times people, when it says, don't touch unclean, people think, oh, I got I to gotta be careful of things I touch. Well, the things that you touch, listen, Eve didn't touch anything, but what caused her to fall is because she touched and agreed with what the serpent was saying. See, there's a touch of thought. Then it can be an agreement. That thought might touch you. Amen. And then it creates a what? A desire. That's all the serpent did was create a desire to her. And then she fell into that desire. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. All of those are desires. And it all began with words. Just a few words. Simple words. To turn the desire towards him and away from God. And he succeeded. Amen? So he says, come out from among them. Be separate. Don't touch those things which are unclean. And I'll receive them. Then I'll be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord. Helps for the heart. Desires that become idols. Associations that promote offensive desires toward God. People become all of a sudden rebellion. You know, it's amazing to me. I've seen so many people that, yes, they're surrendered. Yeah, they're ready. And then the next day they're totally rebellious towards God. Well, where did it come from? Who told you that? And why did you agree with it? You know, there was no, nothing to protect the heart's desires. Just all them, poof. And you can see their content has changed. So the first thing we must do is determine again. Here's the first help. Determine the will of that desire. What is its will? And then we, the second thing we must do is determine the outcome, which we call the fruit of that desire. Amen? 1 Peter chapter 3. First Peter chapter 3, 13. And who is he who will harm you if you become followers of what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness sake, you are blessed. And do not be afraid of their threats nor trouble. But do what? Sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for hope that is in you with what? 
meekness and fear, reverence. Having a good conscience that when they defame you as evildoers, those who revile your good conduct in Christ may be ashamed. For it is better if it is the will of God to suffer for doing good than it is for doing evil. So the, four, the third thing we want to do is sanctify the Lord. In other words, always in your heart. Sanctify his, his desires. You know, we read the word of God to find out what God's desires are. Amen? So we want to sanctify his desires. And, and again, you know, sanctify the Lord's ways in your heart, his desires, and do not react to fear, but respond with what? Meekness and good conduct. Now, don't get me wrong. There's called righteous anger. Hello? And again, this is for today because of all the stuff that's happening. 1 John chapter 4. So the first one is the, the first um, help for the heart is determine the will of the desire. The second one is determine the outcome called the fruit. And the third one is to sanctify the Lord's ways in your heart by his word. 1 John 4. One John chapter four verse one. Beloved, do not believe every spirit or every journalist or news reporter. But test the spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets <laughs> and news anchors have gone out into the world. But this you know, the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak of the world. And the world hears him. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. But he who does not know God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So the fourth thing that we must do is test the voices that promote all desires. Test them. Whether they are Christ or Antichrist. Test them. Don't just accept it. See, so many times people just accept the desire. Do you ever get around someone that speaks everything they think? Danger. Because the enemy's releasing stuff and now they're speaking it. You know where that it's going then? That desire is going right in the heart. And it could be something wrong. James chapter 1. James 1 verse 2. Test the voices. Yes. Let's speak it. My brother counted it all joy when you fall into various trials and there, there is no if there. Hello? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, which is endurance. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect, complete in what? Lacking nothing. So, see, there's a place where you must choose a desire is a choice that you can accept and grab hold of. He says here, look at, choose joy instead of being miserable, instead of grumbling and complaining, instead of blaming everybody else. It says you're going to fall into various trials. Why? Because it's testing you. Amen? So you and I have a choice. We need to grab hold of peace and joy and righteousness in the Holy Spirit all the time, no matter what. No matter what's going on. Verse 12. But blessed is the man who endures temptation, or the attacks of desires. For when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say, when I'm tempted, I'm tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he's what? 
drawn away, drawn away by his own what? Desires, and then what? Enticed. Wow. Then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to the presence of evil, which is sin, and when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. Because the wages of sin is death. So we see they draw away by holding to harmful desires. Philippians chapter 4. Philippians 4.4, 4, let's speak it. Rejoice in the Lord. I'm sorry. When? Oh, snap. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice and let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is what? At hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, with thanksgiving, and let your requests be made known to God. Now look at this. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will do what? Guard your hearts and your thoughts through Christ Jesus. It will guard your hearts and your thoughts. It says rejoice. The Bible tells us that a merry heart is good medicine. In other words, you and I are to avoid anxiety and anxiousness. We're to possess peace in all things. It will guard your thoughts and your heart and everything that we do. You know, so many times people are trying to figure out what's what? Settle. Settle. But, 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 settle. Hallelujah. Psalm 34. So the fifth thing we must avoid is what? Number five. Helps is avoid anxiousness. Amen? Avoid anxiousness. And possess peace. Psalm 34. Verse 1. Let's speak it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Well, then you can't say nothing bad if you're blessing the Lord all the time. Amen. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear of it and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. They looked to him and were radiant and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps all around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, do what? Taste. Is taste a desire? You know, people have desires to taste all kinds of food. Amen? Some of them, I want to try that. Whoa, dude, was that disgusting. That's called a harmful taste. And some of it's good. Everybody likes sweet stuff, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Bless is the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no what? Want to those who what? Fear him, who reverence him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Wow. Psalm 34, the sixth thing is to protect your heart with his presence by praise. Amen? By what? Praise. And the seventh thing is we must maintain a high level of reverence towards God. It's called the fear of the Lord. So the sixth is protect your heart with God's presence by praise. And the seventh is to maintain a high level of reverence known as the fear of the Lord. Ezekiel 36. You know, and when people are feeling down, don't let that desire linger in you. Because it's still an emotion. Amen? Oppression is an emotion. It's a downer. 
Exchange it out. Don't let it linger. Don't let it grab hold of your heart. Ezekiel 36, 22. Therefore say, say to the house of, of Israel, thus says the Lord God, I do not do this for your sake, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. Is everybody there? Verse 23. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord God, says the Lord, when I am howled in you before their eyes. And now look at every one of us has profaned the name of God at some time until we got saved. Now he's hallowing. In other words, now we're honoring him. We're reverencing him. We've got a new heart now. Everything has been brand new. So everything we want to do is to be pleasing to him. If you're born again and don't want to live a life of pleasing God, you ain't born again. Amen? Verse 24. For I'll take you from among the nations, gather you out of all countries, and bring you into your own land. Heck, every one of us here is from some other country. Our forefathers. Amen? He's brought us here. And he says, in verse 25, Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean, and I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your... That's idols of the heart, isn't it? Desires. And I'll give you a new heart. Praise God. And put a, a new spirit within you. And I will take out the heart of stone out of your flesh, and you shall have a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you. And cause you to get cleaned up. I'll cause you to kick out and exchange out those old habits of the heart. And old ungodly idols. I will cause you. Does everybody see that? To walk in my statutes. You can't walk in his statutes without a transferred heart, man. Amen. And you will keep my judgments and you will what? You will do Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers and you shall be my people and I will be your God. We, are, we get a new heart, a new creation caused by his spirit to remove all filthy, ungodly, offensive wants of desires and start new. See, one of the things the enemy does is plant seed of desire. And see, sometimes you don't even know it. And all of a sudden that seed is getting watered and you don't even know it's being watered. And you're like, you're trying to put it under the rug, but it gets bigger and bigger and bigger until you finally trip over it. And things grow in roots and everything else, and now you're miserable because that desire is taking you over. Is everybody okay? Isaiah 26. The way of the just is uprightness, almost upright. You weigh the path of the just. Yes, in the way of your judgments, O Lord, we have waited for you. The desire of our soul or of our heart is for your name and for the remembrance of you. With my soul, I have desired you in the night. He means, when he's saying in my soul, desire, in my heart, I have desired you. Yes, by my spirit within me, I will seek you early. For when your judgments are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. That's pretty powerful because he's saying, my desire is for you. You know, one of the things I find myself saying to the Lord when things begin to creep up, when I find certain things that are, can be offensive in any way whatsoever, when I'm disappointed, especially, I'm, not, I'm usually not disappointed in people. It's usually me I'm disappointed in. I'm my worst enemy. And there's something that didn't turn out right or something that I expected to turn out better or whatever. And, and I find myself, you know what, because there is that desire. We have a desire, every one of us, to be perfect. Or to be well-pleasing to God. And sometimes when that isn't 
because we're looking for that fulfillment of a desire. And when that fulfillment of a desire is not fulfilled, when we, get, when we come and worship God, we come into His presence, our desire is to be fulfilled in His presence. Amen? But when you're out in the world and you're doing, or you're at jo your job or whatever and things are happening, you don't get that opportunity to get come corporately and come worship God and get that presence. So there's something you just say, Lord, you're my fulfillment. That's it. You, you make that confession. Lord, you're my fulfillment. In other words, you're, what you're doing is you're exchanging heart. Lord, you're my fulfillment. You're some, you get a phone, something happens, disappointment at work, whatever. You know what? Lord, you're my fulfillment. Nothing else can fulfill me like you, Lord. And as you begin to confess this, you'll find something begin to change in your heart. You become peaceful. You're beginning fulfilled. Lord, you're my fulfillment. Because what you speak is what you what? Eat, and what you eat is what you become. So you make that confession, especially when you're out there by yourself and things are happening and whatever. Lord, you're my fulfillment. Well, you know, I really wanted this to happen. I really wanted that to happen, but you're my fulfillment. You know, I ain't getting healed yet. Nothing is in and I'm still in that one, but you're my fulfillment. Hello? It changes everything. Hallelujah. I didn't get that raise yet either. You're my fulfillment. <laughs> Romans 12. And verse 1 and 2. This is number 8 now. Meaning new beginning. 8 helps for the heart. Glory. I beseech you therefore brethren. By the mercies of God. That you present your bodies. A living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, for, which is your reasonable service. And in this, there's that area where you are exchanging your heart every day with the Lord. Lord, I present to you my heart. You know, David was known as a man after God's heart. Did David blow it? Heck yeah, he blew it. He blew it multiple times. But one of the things he kept doing is running back to God's presence. He didn't run from God's presence. He ran to God's presence. Amen? Verse 2. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Well, again, in this transforming of the renewing of your mind, you're going to be transforming the renewing of your heart. Amen? Because things change. Your heart is constantly in an area of desire. And what you think can become a desire. And what your desire is can cause a thought. Again, we want to always be able to, at that opportunity, determine the will of that desire. What is the will of that desire? What's its purpose? Amen? So the, 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 the eighth thing we need to do is constantly present your heart of exchange to the Lord every single day. That's the eighth thing. Become a man and woman after the heart of the Father. Let him know, Lord, I'm after your heart. Lord, I'm after your heart. I want to know what your heart desire is. Man, it, does, it pleases him. And I'm going to close with Psalm 19. Again, especially at a time of like, like now, which all the stuff is going around. Rumors. False accusations, criticisms. Psalm 19, verse 7. Helps for the heart. Eight helps for the heart. Hallelujah. Everybody okay? Put it into practice. Verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testament of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them your servant is warned. And in keeping them there's what? 
great reward. That's keeping your heart clean before God. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse me from secret fault. Keep your servant also from what? Presumptuous sins. That's called assuming. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and I shall be innocent of great transgressions. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. For it is written, for it is spoken, and so shall it be. So, Lord, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed for the guidelines of helps, eight helps for the heart. Let our heart be always sanctified towards you, that the world may see you and not us. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. <laughs>